guys. It's a beautiful day here and I thought I would take a minute and talk to you guys a little bit about the top five. Let me just make sure I got my notes right. Um, the top five apps that we use to navigate and plan our trips. Hey, you could be larger than life. And I think it's really important that you um, plan your trip. I know there's a lot of people out there who don't, they just wing it, they pull into the next RV stop and they're good to go, right? I'm a planner. If anybody knows me, you know I'm a planner. And I wanna know where I'm going. I wanna know I've got a place to stay when I get there. And I wanna know that I've got the best route going for me. The first one that we use in terms of finding good camping spots is called All Stays. Um, it's a free app. There is a pro version. I find the free app to be just as helpful as anything else. Um, there's a lot, trust me, there is a lot of different sites that you can use and apps that you can use. So I'm giving you uh, kind of some of our preferred ones, but as you know, there are tons out there and all kinds that you can get. The thing is, is when you're traveling, especially with a 40 foot RV like ours, we're like 56 feet altogether. Um, backing up isn't easy, you know? You don't wanna get stuck in a situation where you have to back up or you have to start over or let's say you're you know you need to pull in for gas so we use a truck app to find gas um, we like to stick to truck stops it just makes it um, a little more assured that we're gonna fit and that we're not going to run into a problem you know you're trying to scope it out before you pull into like a, a quick trip or a 7-eleven and you can't see the back of the building you don't know what's back there if you're gonna be able to get through it I just like knowing before we get into that situation, you know, that, that we're gonna be okay. And then um, the other thing is bridges and tunnels. And I've said this before, make sure you guys that you've gone out and you've measured the height of your rig. You wanna include the air conditioners and anything up there on the roof. The best way to do that is to get up on the roof, right? Drop a tape measure down from the roof line and that's gonna give you a more accurate height of your overall rig. These are just some things to think about. Um, but as far as planning our route, for example, uh, we're getting ready to go to Zion um, this fall. And there is an area that I'm aware of up by Zion that has a lot of switchbacks. And there's a tunnel that they actually don't allow you to uh, fit through uh, if you're over 30 feet. So it's a two lane tunnel and they actually stop traffic on one side. If you're bringing a big rig or something that's wide through there, they make traffic stop for you and you have to pay a fee. I forget how much it is, but you can look it up. Um, just Google Zion tunnel. I'll try to get the information for you. Hey y'all, Cletus here. That fee for Zion to go through that tunnel and they close it all down for you and everything is $15. Anyway, um, 30 feet, you know, that's the max. So you need to know how long you are before you get into situations where you aren't gonna fit. And the, it's not like you can just make a U-turn in these things, right? So you gotta know where you're headed. And so I like, we. there's two navigations that we like to use. We use Waze and we use Google Maps. So Waze is a great from here to there kind of app. Um, I like that it's very cognitive of traffic. It's very uh, user friendly. Um, it just, it, it, it takes you the fastest route if that's, if that's the settings that you've chosen, right? Um, no fuss, no muss. I just like the way it gives you directions. Google Maps is pretty good too. Um, I think that the reaction time with Google Maps is just a little more delayed. So what I do is I use Google Maps to map out the route before we go. I don't use Waze for that. 
and here's why. With Google Maps, you can, I keep shaking the table. With Google Maps, you can actually set waypoints. What that means is you set your, your starting point and your destination point. And then along the route, if there are places that you want to stop or um, things that you want to see, maybe there, you know, even if it's uh, gas stations, maybe specific gas stations that you know are comfortable for you to get in and out of. For example, when we go from here to Salt Lake, the halfway point is Beaver, Utah. And we love, love, love to stop at that creamery on the way. So I'll put that in as a stopping point. And, and that way, you know, we've just, it just helps with Google Maps to get me where we're going. Another thing that I'll use waypoints for is let's say the most direct route from destination A to B is going to be through the middle of a downtown of, you know, uh, can, you know, the big, the city, the city portion of where you're going. Uh, maybe it wants to take you to the middle of Chicago or, you know, the middle of Las Vegas. Those aren't great places when you've got a 40 foot rig behind you or you're towing something, right? So if you want to avoid the traffic, even though Google Maps is going to take you the shortest distance between two points, what you can do is find a waypoint around it okay so so look at your map check it out i'll show you how to do this in a second and then you you put a a destination spot over here and maybe one over here and it will route you over here now if you save that map to bring it up later or let's say you send it to your phone so that you can download it and you've got it in your phone when you go to bring that up later Okay, it's going to delete those those waypoints. So there's a specific way, and I'll show you guys how to do it. How you set up your waypoints, and then you um, share or embed that map, and then send it to yourself. And then that way those waypoints stay and they don't go anywhere. So that's a, a really important uh, feature there that I'll teach you guys how to do. And then, so now we've got all stays, we've got ways, We've got Google. Um, some people like Rand McNally, they actually have an app that you can use. Um, in the old days, I just used my Atlas or my, my Rand McNally map, you know, the big old paper one. And uh, ever since Carl and I have been traveling together, I'm the map reader. He drives, I read the map, it works out great. He doesn't argue with me. He goes where I tell him to go. And um, I'm not a bad map reader. I mean, I can't really honestly say there's been that many situations that I got us into, into a pickle about it all. But um, obviously, since Garmin and GPS and these things have come along, it certainly makes things a whole lot easier. But, um, you know, towing, towing a rig is, is not an easy task, and you got to know where you're headed. So another one that I wanted to bring up, maybe two more that I want to bring up, is um, Harvest Hosts. Now, I don't know if you guys have heard about Harvest Hosts. It's become quite the rage in the last few years. It's a very inexpensive membership program. And what it is, is dry camping at many locations across the country uh, that have volunteered, if you will, to be part of this membership program. Predominantly, it started out with wineries, farms, um, and um, you can stay one night for free, period. Your annual membership, I think it's up to like $44, $45, somewhere in there. Harvest Host is $99 a year. Which is, you know, one night's price somewhere. Um, so you get one night, you know, maybe it's on your way somewhere. That makes it a lot more convenient. There's more and more Walmarts that aren't letting you stay in their parking lots. Um, used to be you could find that situation all over the place you know if you just needed a night a night somewhere i think bass pro and um some cracker barrels will let you stay with your rig in their parking lots but you know the trade-off for that is it's noisy and there's cars and it's not private and of course there's no hookups 
Harvest Host gives you some beautiful scenery, right? I mean, they're all over the place. And, and when you sign up with the app, it'll show you all the different locations. And it's not just, you know, if you've got kids and you're thinking, oh, I don't want to stay at a winery or whatever. There's other, there's amusement parks. There's, um, there's museums. Uh, there's all kinds of places. Um, you just need to be self sufficient right so you need i mean you don't have to have a solar or or a way to do electricity if you don't require electricity you're just stopping for the night but you do need to be self-contained right uh, black gray water those kinds of things you just there's no plug-ins you just pull up you park and then the other thing that they ask you to do is p contribute to the place you're staying so it, it doesn't have to be much if you're staying at a winery go in do a tasting, maybe buy a nice bottle of wine, those kinds of things. It, it helps out the winery and you get a night stay and a lovely bottle of wine. So it's a win-win all the way around. So that's Harvest House. And then um, another one I love to use is Pinterest. I have no interest in Pinterest. Um, if you guys aren't on Pinterest, you should definitely check it out. Um, I kind of equate it to like Instagram. So you can go into Pinterest and you can actually type in where you're going. Like you're going to Santa Fe, New Mexico. You type that in, and all kinds of stuff will pop up. You will get all kinds of information about, you know, top 10 things to do in Santa Fe, New Mexico, the top 10 museums, best free things to do uh, when you're, and it's, um, I kind of akin it to more uh, local, you know, it, it's just regular everyday people putting this stuff into interest because they, they found it interesting and helpful. And uh, it's a great tool. It's also a great foodie app, right? So you want to know the best places to eat in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Pinterest is great. Um, lots of great recipes and um, you can follow other people like maybe there's some uh, foodie person in Santa Fe and uh, they're going to tell you the best local restaurants to eat. You can follow them and then whenever they put up something new, you can, you know, check it out and see what they're doing. So those are all um, great planning apps and planning tools that you guys have at your disposal to use to plan things. Um, so I'm going to get on Google and I'm going to show you guys how I put in those waypoints and save the map. Um, if you have any questions about, uh, you know, how to, how to plan the trip or where, where you're going, um, weather apps are good. You always want to know what the weather's going to be like the date that you're going. And, um, it, cause you know, I mean, if you just kind of think about it, you want to go south in the winter where it's warm and north in the summer when it's really hot, right? So if you kind of plan your your route around the country, around the, those kinds of things, I mean, that that's probably, you know, that just that's just logical, right? So anyway, so I'm gonna map out this um, trip to Zion and you guys can come along and check it out with me and I'll show you how I get there. Okay guys, so I'm in the office and I'm gonna do this Google map thing with you and you guys can just follow along and I'll show you kind of how I'm gonna map this trip to Zion. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're going to pick a place that we would like to see along the route and I'm going to choose the Valley of Fire State Park. It's right here about in the middle going to bring it up over here on the left and what we're going to do is we're going to tell it to add a stop okay now what it's done though is it added the stop after Zion but I want it before so over here you're going to just click on Valley of Fire State Park hold down on the mouse and drag it up above the Zion campground now we're going to put our Zion back in here. Zion Canyon Campground Springdale. Okay, so now we've got a little detour to Valley of Fire State Park. And um, let's go see if we can find another spot that we would like to stop at. So I'm going to zoom in here. We're going to go up to around St. George 
Let me zoom in and find something I would like to see in St. George. So here's the dinosaur discovery site. Okay, so we're gonna click on that. And now we're going to add a stop. Actually, what I can do also, another way to do it, is to copy the address, right? So now we've copied it to the clipboard. We go back to our directions and we add it in right here. Control V copies it. Oops. Control V copies it. And then we're going to, again, we're going to drag it up to above Zion Canyon. And we're going to put in Zion again. Okay, Zion Canyon. Okay, are you guys following along? Are you getting it? Okay, so here's our destination. You can see the route. We start in Las Vegas. We're going to Valley of Fire. And then we're going to stop at this uh, Riverside Drive, which is the address for the dinosaur site. Okay, and then you go on. So now, to get this to your phone and save those stops, because if you just send this to your phone or send this to the app or save it to the app, it's going to give you the shortest route, right? It's just going to do the destination from beginning to end, and it's not going to include the waypoints that you've put on here. So what you're going to do is you're going to go over here and up in the top left corner, you see the three bars. Click on the three bars, come down to share or embed map. Now that's going to bring up a link, okay? It says link to share and it gives the link to the map you've just created. You're going to say copy link. Now it's copied it to the clipboard. You're going to go to your email. Let me get to my email. And we're going to compose. We're going to send it to. Uh, I'm going to send it to myself. Okay. I can type. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to send it to myself right there. I'm going to say Zion Map. And then down in the subject, I'm going to paste. Okay, and then I'm going to send. And that's it. And then when I bring it up on my phone, it is going to save the map that I've created. And it's going to give me this one again. I'm going to be able to follow it. Hey, you guys. Coco and I just wanted to tell you guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the video. And we'll see you guys next week.